So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with and Pat from Fit for an Autopsy. And we're gonna ask them some questions today about their upcoming album. Oh, what the future holds. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Um, things have been really, really great. I'm actually super excited to see where everything goes because the response has been really, really incredible. Hell yeah. That's awesome. All right. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title, Oh, What the Future Holds, and the cover art? I mean, kind of, I would say the cover art kind of gives the idea of like, you know, Mother Earth being damaged and destroyed and Mother Nature being damaged and destroyed, but still holding on to the human race and, you know, kind of the way that things happen here, you know, people don't necessarily take into account the damage that we're doing and, um, so there's like a couple of different metaphoric things, but I, I know that that's kind of what I get when I look at it. Um, mm-hmm. And album title is just simply the idea of with all of the terrible things we're doing, what does the future hold? You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So, mm-hmm. um, so can you tell us a little about your writing process for this album? Um, I the writing process is pretty much the same as it's been for every other album I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Will kind of tends to stay home. So COVID didn't really affect us as bad as it did with everybody else because, you know, we normally have somebody at home to write and we'll be on the road touring. So the process didn't really change that much. Um, I feel like maybe we had a little more time going into every song for the record, maybe more than normal because, you know, we were on a hiatus and everything was what it was. So it kind of was the way it was and we rolled. So not too much change. Okay. All right. Uh, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this record and the meaning behind it. Um, I like far, the the line in "Far from Heaven," simply "Far from Heaven," because it's the idea of how removed we are from anything good as a people. You mm-hmm. know, and I, so much damage to each other in the world, and just the interpretation of "Far from Heaven" is really, really cool. So I kind of like that a lot. I like yeah, that that's a really lot. sick. Um, yeah. So, what song on the album took longest to write, and which one is your personal favorite? Um, I honestly, would say the song that took the longest to write would probably be uh, Two Towers" because there's a lot going on in that song, and lyrically, it took a minute to get it right. And my favorite track on that album actually happens to be that song. So that's the one that I'm most excited for. Oh, yeah. Okay, solid. Uh, so how did the track list for this record come about? Did you guys write the opener to be an opener, closer to be the closer? Just kind of shuffle it together and listen through a couple of times. What was the process like for that? Um, I think that when you put a track list together for a record, you have to do it like a heartbeat or a pulse. Like it has to have up and ups and downs. It's got to have movement kind of the same way when you're writing a song. Mm-hmm. So know if you're if you're putting a, a track list together and it doesn't have that movement or that motion that it needs it, it's boring and stagnant mm-hmm. and then it's not even worth listening to you can have amazing songs and just not have that good feel of a record you know the ups and downs of a pulse or a heartbeat like that idea so i think that that is the key for me when we put records together is that the record feels like a giant piece of music so when we put it together, you know, you take into account the way the songs flow and, you know, you have an aggressive song and then something a little more melodic and you kind of work it the best you can. You know what I mean? And I think that's the best way to put together a song track list for a record. Hmm. Do you guys write with that idea in mind? Um, no, I think the songs just come together on their own and then we we kind of put them in the place that they need to be in order for it to work. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Um, so where was your headspace at while you guys were writing this album? Um, I mean, just like everyone else's, you know, COVID is pretty terrible. So it was, uh, it was stressful. We had just gotten done having a bunch of tours get canceled and we're watching the world kind of crumble around us. So it was, it was definitely uh, not an easy task. That's for sure. But um it was a pretty dark time it still is a pretty dark time so just kind of made it work and wrote the record and you know kind of put ourselves in a place where that became the priority you know and it it kind of helped 
was it was a little bit therapeutic for sure and uh just made it work all right. All right. Uh, so how do you recommend your listeners to listen to this record for the first time should they play in the car with friends should they play in the dark with headphones on should they blast it at a party what do you personally recommend i mean all of those things sound wonderful um, <laughs> i want people to enjoy it the way that they need to you mm-hmm. know it's different for everybody and it means something different for everybody and it has a different place for everyone so you know it's one of those things where you hope that the listener is going to get the, you know, the full independent listen on their own and the tracks will be huge, amazing thing for everyone. But I mean, there's something amazing about listening to new music with your friends. And there's something great about listening to a new record in your house in the dark by yourself. It's, it's really, I think it, it just depends on the listener. So if any of those things happen, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. All right. Sure. Uh, And as my follow-up question, how did you personally listen to the record for the first time? Um, Skeptically, um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Personally, the first time I listened to it as a full piece of music, I was Mm -hmm. by my, like a small studio in my house, and I just put it on with my monitors and drank a cup of coffee and sat back and listened and just really like fell into it as much as I could because while you're writing and recording a record, it, it doesn't ever sound the same as it does when it's finished. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an experience the whole way through. So I tried to just sit back and take it in kind of maybe that by myself in the dark kind of thing, but just in a way that worked. You know what I mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. And what was that like when you finally listened to it for the first time? What emotion were you feeling in that moment? Um, I was proud of that record. I think mm-hmm. this record, Really, really good, and I think that it's uh, it's one of those things that was unexpectedly better than I had imagined. You know, when yeah. you're in same, like I said. So when I finally heard the finished product, I was very, very excited. Oh yeah, that's good. Uh, so this question should be super, super quick. Off the top of your head, I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words, no more, no less. Um, which song? Uh, the album. Oh, describe the album. Mm-hmm. Um, angry, sad, and aggressive would be three words that I could use, but I could also say um, melodic, emotional, and uh, eclectic because it covers a bunch of our different styles. So either one of those work for me. Okay. Wow. Oh, thank you for giving us two options. Oh, wow. All right. That never happens. <laughs> Um, so is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this album to invoke in your listeners? Um, I think that the, I think it's, it's a little selfish for a musician to expect their music to, um, give someone the same feelings that they expect. You know, I think lyrics, um, you know, it's, it's up for Mm -hmm. interpretation by the listener. And I Mm -hmm. think that's really important. And um, I think that, you know, it's one of those things that you can't tell the listener what to get out of your music. You can only give it to them and hope that there's some sort of reaction. And, you know, I could be on stage playing a song that's written about one very specific thing and you could take it as something completely different. So it really just depends on the person or persons listening to the music and how it affects them. I just want people to feel something. Fair hmm. enough. Yeah. All right. That's good. Um, so what band or artist influence do you think you can hear the most on this album, if any? Um, oh, man, that's like a crazy thing because, we, and we talk about this all the time, like people tell me what they think our stuff sounds like. And, you know, people say, oh, it's got this influence or that influence. And they're probably right about all of that. But I would more than anything, we're influenced by what's going on around us than any particular band, you know? And when you say I'm, I'm influenced by, I mean, a big one we get compared to is Gojira, right? People say mm. a lot from them, but like also we're influenced by the bands that influence Gojira. Like you can hear a lot of Morbid Angel influence in Gojira's music. And, you know, we definitely are influenced by old death metal bands. We're influenced by you know, post rock and all this stuff. So it's impossible to put a finger on it. You know what I mean? But I would say the most 
influential thing that happened this year that you know, kind of pushed us was certainly the pandemic. Mm-hmm. For sure. All right. Uh, so what is your favorite memory that you've made while creating this record? Um, I had a really good time going up and recording my solos this time around. I went in with some stuff in my pocket and I ended up not really loving it as we were laying it down. So I was like kind of down in front of a computer for a day and come up with a whole new solo for a song on the spot, which was really something I've never had to do before with that kind of a time crunch. And it, it just came out better than I had expected it would. And I was really excited about it. So that was a really cool thing. Um, and also getting to see my friends after not getting to see them for like a year and a half was incredible. Yeah. So really cool too. I love that. Hmm. Um, so picture this, you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Uh, Quest bar and a coffee. Nice. All right. Solid. <laughs> Uh, so if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be? Ooh, well, it would have to be something vegan or else Will couldn't have any. So, um, you know, I'm going to say we would be a salad. And the reason I say that is because there's a million different ways you can make a salad. It's generally pretty good all the time. Anybody can eat it from any walk of life, whether you're vegan or non-vegan or whatever. And I mean, who doesn't like a salad? It's perfect, perfect small meal. All right. Got a point. That was good. That was good. Uh, so where do you see the band in the next five years? Hopefully on tour. I mean, we just want a tour. That's it. We want to play. We want to play shows. And we've had that taken away from us. And, you know, it, it's been tough. It's been a tough couple of years not being able to do this whole thing. So um, I would say if, if I see us anywhere, it's, you know, playing shows whether it's in front of 500 people a thousand people 50 people we just want to play music so hmm. fair enough All right. uh, so for these last couple questions we're actually going to shift away from music if that's okay with you but six we're actually going to go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink i would want i would want a pizza from Danino's in brooklyn Mm-hmm. And I would want a cup of coffee from Heart Roasters in Portland, but a very specific coffee. I would want an Ethiopian espresso shot in milk, so a latte with Ethiopian espresso, and mm-hmm. that would. Okay. That's it. All right. Like that. uh, what is on that pizza? Because you didn't you specified the coffee, but you didn't specify what was on the pizza exactly. A uh, well done plain pizza like it's like it's like the perfect meal so so for me it's like to me the perfect food Mm -hmm. but just just well done pizza from caninos would be perfect all right all right uh so if you could live in one fiction world for a week where would you live i maybe i would want to live in the matrix um the matrix is like a place where you can once you know you're there you can it's limitless you can literally do anything right Mm -hmm. so to have the ability literally anything that i wanted to do and you know the the only place would have to be that i would need to know that i was there in order to do those things so if i knew where i was going i think the matrix would be a cool fantasy like place to visit all right. Sure. Good. I don't think we've gotten that one no. at all in the 600 interviews. I don't think anybody <laughs> has ever said the Matrix. Very good really? answer. Yeah. Uh, so I actually have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we've spoken to has said that it is the most important question. Okay. What is your favorite color? My favorite color? Yeah. Uh, my favorite, I'm going to say my favorite color is pink. Hmm. Huh. Very good. You have a specific shade of pink? Um, like hot pink, like, like eighties hot pink is my, my favorite go-to color, whether it be on guitars or sneakers, Nike Jordans with infrared on them are like one of my like weaknesses. So that's, that's one of my favorites. All right. For sure. Ooh. Um, so as Gloria said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, I just want to thank everybody who's listening. Thank everybody who's supported the band and 
you know, giving us an opportunity to kind of get in their ear with our music and, you know, hopefully we'll see all you guys out on the road. January 14th, we release our new record, Oh, What the Future Holds on Nuclear Blast. And, uh, you know, hopefully everybody picks it up and gives it a listen and comes out and sees us play on our headliner in the States. And, you know, that's it. Just thank you to everybody who's ever supported the band. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for now. This has been Pat from Fit for an Autopsy, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.